Okay, I'll b bring the uh, select board meeting to order. This is uh, warned as a joint meeting. As of right now, there isn't a quorum for the trustees, but we'll bring the select board to order. Is there any changes or uh, adjustments to the agenda as presented? And I have two items, a second personnel issue, as well as a discussion of 10 cents on the grand list. Is there any other items? Seeing none. Okay, I now turn it over to Kent and his hearing. Thanks, Eric. The, uh, I, it, it, I've really enjoyed being in your community uh, since, uh, since, since Thursday. Came on Wednesday and on uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, spent about 20 hours talking to people, and, uh, which has been very productive, and I see a lot of familiar faces out here. I, I'm not sure there are very many of you who I actually didn't talk to, so uh, uh, the, I, at least I didn't scare away the, f the folks I had a chance to meet. Uh, let me, we're a, you know, this typical computer problem, we're moving the PowerPoint, because we don't have the right cable from my laptop to Meredith's laptop, <clears throat> but uh, just before we, just as we started to do that, the, uh, the blue screen showed up on my laptop, and, uh, you know, we end up uh, in this endless reboot, so it will be done fairly quickly, and if we have to throw in the towel, uh, you know, both Brian and Meredith have the PowerPoint on their email, and uh, we'll be able to do it that way. But let me tell you a little bit about, uh, about us. Um, uh, Center for Government Research was started in uh, 1915 by uh, George Eastman of Eastman Kodak. Um, Eastman, at the time, it was called the Bureau of Municipal Research. There were a bunch of these around the country. This is in the Progressive Era. Tammany Hall was still alive and well in New York City and, and in Albany. And uh, a lot of the business leadership felt like there was a need for a, uh, uh, some sort of impartial uh, arbiter uh, for the public sector. And so we've really continued to play that role. We're a, not, we're a 501c3, we're a not-for-profit. We work, uh, we've worked very uh, extensively in the state of New York. Uh, so about the time I started, which was in, uh, I hate to admit it, 1990, uh, we began to branch out to other parts of New York and, and other states. So we've worked in, uh, Lots of states. Uh, last year, I think we were in, uh, in s seven or eight states. Uh, we've done this particular kind of work in, in a number of states, uh, mostly because of the interest of our governor, Andrew Cuomo, uh, in reducing uh, duplication in government. Now, I think that Governor Cuomo sees this often as a really a kind of a way of def de de deflecting attention from the state budget, but he's very quick to blame local government for high taxes. So he, when he was uh, attorney general, uh, passed, uh, pushed through, drafted and pushed through a law uh, that made it much, much easier for local governments to dissolve. And in particular, in, now here, you have a petition process where you can petition the government, your local government, to uh, do a study, and that's the, the, the place we're in right now. In New York, you could petition a uh, local government, specifically, you know, it could be either a village or a town, um, to hold a referendum on dissolution. So if that had been the process that you'd followed here, you would have already had a referendum because it's time limited. It has to happen within a certain number of days. And the referendum would have simply said, uh, yes or no, the village of Johnson shall uh, be dissolved, period. Uh, and if that was a yes, then the, the, the village board would have been obligated to come up with a plan, not only come up with a plan, but pass a plan, approve a plan, and that that approved plan would, um, would then go into, um, would go into effect unless there was another petition drive that would actually force another vote on the plan. So that is a, uh, a kind of a surprising, surprisingly powerful push for local governments to dissolve, which is, of course, what Governor Cuomo intended. Not only that, but he um, also put into the law some significant incentives for local governments to uh, dissolve. For example, um, for two governments, of a town and a village, uh, if town and village, if, again, if you were in New York, um, heaven forbid, um, you know, stay in Vermont, uh, you would um, take 15% of, of the tax levy, the combined tax levy, the town and the village, and the state would send you a check in that amount every year, kind of forever. That's the way the legislation is written. The legislation allows that to occur for as long, and, and, unless the legislature eventually changes it, which of course they will. Um, but we um, you know, don't actually um, have a deadline on that. There's no sunset on that. Uh, not only that, but the state also picks up the legal fees for the dissolution. It picks up a lot of the costs, very strongly encouraging dissolution, and yet, 
you'll be not surprised to know. Many communities look at this, they study it, and they say, eh, I don't think so. I like things the way they are. We're not going to change. I don't care what Andrew Cuomo thinks. Uh, you know, we're, well, we have uh, two separate governments now. We're perfectly happy to stay two separate governments. We have done work uh, like this, not only in New York, but in other states, uh, probably 75 plus communities. Uh, I've done this work in Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Uh, our, you know, our organization has worked in, in Maine um, on, and a number of other states on this particular issue. It is a, um, and we actually, um, Meredith, I think we have a go here. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, uh, so, so I, I've learned a lot, um, and one of the things I, I you know, will say is that every community is different. So there are some common themes, but I learn something new every time I come into a new community. Uh, it's one of the privileges of the job that I have at the Center for Governmental Research is that the opportunity to travel around and see lots of local government. That's really what we end up specializing in is local government. And so it's, it's all different sizes and all different kinds of configurations. I mean, in 1996, I studied the merger of the city of Buffalo into its surrounding county, Erie County. Um, we have looked at, at, at school district consolidations uh, uh, and, uh, and, and regional consolidations as well. So there's a, uh, there's a lot. And I really thought we were there. And it's not quite there yet. Okay. This is maddening. Yeah, sorry about that. It's still, it's still thinking about <clears throat> So what have I learned about Johnson? First, I've learned that uh, this is a community with tremendous strengths. This is a community that, um, you know, it, it's, it's not a, a separate town and, and village, really. Most of the people in the community, I think, think of Johnson as a, as a single community. Uh, and I think that is, uh, is very healthy. Um, and that... Um, so I, I think that you, know, you come to this with a lot of strengths. One of the things that, that, that I see that's, uh, is that the number of things that you already share between the town and village. Now, some of the places we come to and we work in, we see some fairly st significant distinctions between, uh, uh, between the two levels of government. And we see a lot of duplication and a lot of redundancy. You know, they're both doing this, and they're both doing that, and they're both doing the other thing. And that's not what we see here in, uh, in Johnson. Let me say too that um, when I've gone to communities, I, uh, the uh, the question of merger, uh, in, in again in my experience, um, the 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 answer usually uh, rests on one of two things. Um, if you are uh, if you see a situation in which there are there is substantial redundancy and therefore there's a lot of money to be saved, then that's one you know pretty good reason for two municipalities to merge. The other thing we see, in, uh, particularly in really small communities, is where uh, the, the pool of, of individuals who are, you, get, you do have it? Your Wi-Fi, that I can connect to. Oh, and, and it's not, okay, well, we're gonna have to wait for this thing then. Yep. She'll be back. <laughs> oh, this is really aggravating. Um, so the other thing we'll, we'll notice is that the pool of, of uh, individuals willing to volunteer, whether you're talking about being, um, you know, being the, uh, the, you know, heading one of these local governments, being the, the, uh, the head of the select board, head of the, um, of the trustees, or uh, people willing to serve on planning boards and zoning boards, um, you know, those, um, those individuals, we, um, we see that there is a, a fairly shallow pool of volunteers and we have a difficult time persuading uh, people to serve. And as a consequence, people serve for a very long time. And, and that's not necessarily healthy. If you've got the same board that is, that is functioning in that, in that role for decades, then um, you know, that probably isn't a healthy sign for the community. And if you don't have uh, active, engaged uh, leadership, then uh, leaders can make mistakes just because uh, you know, perhaps they're not aware of, they're not keeping up with what, uh, what really ought to be happening or you know, frankly, you just get a little weary. Uh, I was in a community um, not, uh, two years ago and um, I petitioned the individual members of the committee. I don't think it was a single member who'd been on for, for less than 20 years. And, uh, and I asked them if, they're, if they were um, facing competitive elections or if there were people waiting in the wings, ready to take over for them when they, um, uh, when they wanted to step down. And the answer was no. And um, 
that community did end up uh, choosing uh, to dissolve. Um, so that was, um, uh, I, I think in that case it was a reasonable decision. It could have gone either way. If there was a referendum, the referendum supported the, uh, the notion of dissolution. Well, we got a PowerPoint. I'm sorry, it's a... Uh, <clears throat> so I was saying to someone earlier, the, uh, the reason for using these things is uh, to avoid uh, just forgetting what I intended to say. Um, anyway, so let's see here. There we go, all right, okay, back. So some of this is telling you things you already know. Um, and we did take a look at the, um, at the demographics. Um, as you know, there's about, about 2,000 people who live outside the uh, village, uh, but in the town. Uh, the only thing I'll call your attention to, two things I'll call your attention to. One is the share of, of families in poverty relative to the statewide average. A higher share of poverty in both the village and the town than you do in the statewide. <clears throat> and the share of housing owner-occupied um, is much lower in both the village, particularly the, the village, but also uh, in the town. We take a look at this from a uh, fiscal perspective. In terms of tax parcels, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the village is, um, the village is, you know, roughly a quarter in terms of um, total assessed value, 59 million relative, or, you know, relative to uh, 217. Um, the uh, population numbers, if you want to run those numbers, the uh, population of the village is about 43% of the population of the, of the town. <clears throat> and again, these are numbers that you see in your annual reports, and these numbers, are, of course, drive your, um, drive your tax file, uh, tax uh, bills, uh, but probably you don't look at them uh, in one place. So let me just call your attention to a couple of items. <clears throat> so the municipal tax rate on assessed value in the uh, village is 0.18, about 2%, and about 8% in uh, uh, town-wide. What that leads to is if you look at the, the tax on a median-valued home, the median-valued home drawn from that demographic number I did that we, we took from the, uh, from the Census Bureau. So the tax value, tax on a median-value home in the village, about $300, uh, town-wide, about $1,200. So the total municipal property tax in the village, about $1,500. And again, um, on the median-valued home, which is you know, a, a little bit higher, uh, on the town outside village, it comes out to about, about $1,200. The education tax rate, of course, is, is, is larger than both. So the education cost for village, about $2,500. Again, this is on the median valued home. Uh, <clears throat> when we produce a report for you, which we're doing in the next week or two, I'll, 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 I'll flesh this out a little bit. The median valued home is just uh, kind of the easy way to talk about it. That value, of course, here is 163,000 for the village, about 160,000 uh, town wide. <clears throat> so I want to talk a bit about the functions of the village and town. This is just, you know all this, but I'm just kind of going over it so that uh, we're kind of in agreement and understand um, uh, what you're doing um, from, from the way I, I see things. Uh, so f first, uh, let me note that um, you have a lot of shared services already. Uh, the shared services you have are uh, far greater than I see in most communities I work in. So you are already sharing a lot. You have a shared municipal building. You have a shared clerk treasurer. Um, you, uh, <clears throat> in terms of public works and utilities, you've got a, a, a separation of responsibilities. You don't have two governments doing the same things. You have two governments doing different things village oversees principally the utilities. The town maintains and repairs uh, local roadways. The snow removal uh, is, is shared, and we'll talk more about uh, that particular issue in a bit. Um, 
in terms of public safety, the village is responsible for fire protection. The town con does not provide it directly, but it contracts for police protection and emergency medical services with, uh, with those other providers. <clears throat> Taking a look at uh, town-wide responsibilities, public safety, just giving you a number of the, uh, uh, an idea of the numbers, public safety contracted services, 110,000 for EMS, share 438. These, of course, are shared between individuals living in the village and um, people living outside the village um, based on, uh, on taxable property. So um, um, even though these are considered uh, town responsibilities, it isn't as though these are only paid for by people who live outside the village boundaries. These are paid for by everyone within the town. Public works, similarly, high, highway and summer roads, comes out to about a half a million dollars, solid waste, another 12,000. Um, the town is also responsible for some other individual services, recreation, library, uh, the historical society. Um, <clears throat> if we take a look at the, the village, um, again, the village provides fire protection. This is a, de a department of the village. Um, the expense, the total expense of $185,000 is uh, split between the village, the town, and then the towns of Belvedere and Waterville. Water and wastewater is a utility. Now, since the operations were contracted out, uh, the costs are all subsumed within that f f for the ratepayer. So when, when you have a, a, a utility for water, wastewater, also for electric, the ratepayers are paying the freight. Uh, that's because the ratepayers are not the same as the village residents. Uh, in the case, in, in, in most cases, it's mostly village residents, but the, the footprints aren't exactly the same, and that's true pretty much everywhere. You may choose to extend sewer outside of the village boundary in some cases. In some cases, there are people within a village boundary who might not be on the sewer, who might not be on the water system. <clears throat> the, um, so again, water expenses, 300000 wastewater, a half a million. Uh, the electric department uh, expenses of about 2.3 million. Now this is where things get a little bit complicated and many of you have talked to me about this issue and we'll, I'll come back to it a little bit later. The staff of the department, uh, the people who work um, in the electric department, also do some other pieces and it's in this, the village's charter that the uh, village will maintain this, the sidewalks and storm sewers within the village. Um, the staff of the department will also support repair and maintenance needs of both water and wastewater uh, utilities. So then the last piece of the village budget is total expenses of about 170000 If you take away the fire and you take away the town payment uh, that um, the, the town uh, payment that's, that's shared with the village, um, and let me just say in terms of this, the, the question of um, of merging the village and the, and the town, just to point out that moving the entire village tax levy to become town-wide would move the town tax levy from 0.78 to 0.83. Um, so if that were to happen, and, and, it, and it certainly wouldn't, the increase in the town tax would be relatively small. I'll get back to that. I don't want to create any uh, angina over that. So let's get to the main question. Does Merging uh, the village and the town of Johnson uh, makes sense. So the first thing I'd like to point out is that um, the notion of dissolution, dissolving the village, I think is really um, a, a, a misnomer. And I think you should really not think about that. Now that's possible. It is possible in, uh, in Vermont that you could simply, the village could simply vote itself out of existence. But it's not common. There have only been half dozen uh, mergers since 1990. Uh, this isn't a very common thing in Vermont. And uh, <clears throat> in my experience, the notion of a village simply dissolving without the cooperation of the town is kind of crazy. Um, and, and it generally has not happened here in Vermont. If you take a look at the cases of mergers, the mergers have been negotiated between the village and the town. And as a consequence, the uh, what actually comes out at the end of the process is something that everyone kind of understands and agrees with. Now, courtesy of, of, of uh, Andrew Cuomo, that isn't frankly the way it works often in New York. And we've got a, a, many cases where the, um, 
the village decided to dissolve and all they did was hand over the keys to the town. They said, hey, we're out of here. You know, we're, we're, we're done with all this and we're just going to walk away. Uh, and sometimes they left a mess. Uh, it was the, you know, the villages that were really disordered and in s some really serious trouble that did that. And they just decided to dissolve and, and, and walked away. That's crazy. Even for the ones that, that did have a, a, a careful analysis done, the town in the state of New York has no authority over that process. The town has no role to play in that process, which, if you think about it, is just crazy. So in this case, I would just urge you, if you're interested in the merger, uh, in continuing this conversation around merger, completely reject this notion of dissolving the village. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not fair. It doesn't lead to an effective outcome. Because again, the town has no say in disposition of assets. The town has no say in how the, the whole process occurs. Much, much better to negotiate a merger plan. So I, I'd recommend the, um, the, the Essex uh, merger study here in, uh, in, in Vermont. Uh, Essex uh, town and village have been talking about uh, merger for a really long time. And uh, they haven't chosen to move forward. It keeps not getting approved. But in the meantime, they've created this massive paper trail. So if you want to learn more about merger in the state of Vermont, uh, the Essex uh, website is a really great source. Um, and you'll see in particular um, <clears throat> that uh, they have come up with a process of developing a new government. So that's the point. It's not that the village goes away and the town takes over. In Essex and uh, um, every other uh, example I looked at in Vermont, in, you know, the, what, what happens is something new emerges. So it isn't as though the village goes away and the town select board is suddenly in charge. Uh, what happens is, is a, a process of transition, and that process of transition creates a new government. And in some cases, the, um, um, you have a phased process. And, you know, and again, I can speak from New York's experience, just because we have so many more of these. There is discretion in New York. You can create a new government by saying, well, let's, we're going to start out with a, with a body that is half of uh, each of the current bodies, so half of the trustees and half of the select board would become the new board um, uh, at, the, at the point of merger. Um, and that over time, uh, as their, their terms expired, they would be reelected. Uh, you know, there would be new people elected. So it, it isn't as though the village would disappear and the town would take over. In terms of asset disposition, another issue that was raised by a lot of people, re remember that first, that most of the assets are effectively owned by the rate payers. You have utilities, the utility rates, uh, payments for water and wastewater paid for the purchase of those assets. And so they're really the property of the rate payers. They're not the property of the village, even if they're technically um, the, the property of the village, in effect, the property of the rate payers. Um, the other point is that you know, the village residents are 43% of the town pop and 28% of the assessed value. So even if there is a negotiation between the town and the village over assets, you know, the village residents are wearing two hats. They wear a hat as a, as a village resident. They also wear a hat as, as, a, as a member of the town. Okay. So because there are such distinct functions in Johnson, <clears throat> I, I can tell you that the cost savings from a merger would be quite modest. That doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It, you know, there are a lot of good reasons to, to consider merger here and, and in other places. But if you're doing it principally because you want to cut cost, then uh, I think you need to look carefully at the, at the village budget and try to figure out what would happen to pieces of the village budget if, in fact, a merger were to occur. So again, the, the cost savings are going to be uh, modest, again, because the functions are distinct and because the overlap of tas tasks are relatively modest. So back office functions, uh, jointly supervised by the um, clerk treasurer, uh, the staff are jointly trained. Uh, they're cross-trained. It isn't as though when you walk into the office, there's a person who does town stuff and another person who does village stuff. Um, you know, when you talk about, uh, about taxes and your, your property tax bill, property tax bills for town and property tax bills for the village are being prepared by the same person. Now, 30 years ago, that would have been a paper process, and you probably would have had a full-time person doing nothing but worrying about property taxes for the village, another full-time person doing nothing but property taxes for the town. But in the age of computers, that's not true anymore. So there would be some modest 
savings uh, in back office functions if you eliminated the two, because sometimes there are things you do twice, but because of the computerization of public services, it would really be uh, fairly modest. I also uh, would say that I see no evidence that the village manager, uh, town administrators, um, have duplicative functions. There are some senses in which they're duplicative, but they are, they are doing very different things just because the responsibilities that, that Meredith has because of the utility nature of what the village does and the responsibilities that Brian has are really different. So I see no evidence that you could simply eliminate one of those positions. You would restructure those positions. You wouldn't eliminate them. Um, so let's trot through the individual components of the, of the village. We start with fire. Uh, fire department already functions with uh, considerable autonomy. Uh, the, f the fees charged by the fire. Um, now, there is a, um, the, f the fees are, are set in two different ways. Um, the fees for um, the town of Johnson and then for um, uh, Belvedere and Waterville uh, are set with reference to um, their historic uh, service demands, their historic um, uh, service volumes. This, the, uh, as this is a village function, um, you know, the village support for the town fire is essentially a residual and that really is set by, by, by the village. You could replace um, that uh, f function by the, of the village board if you were to work at, to go towards a merger situation, you would need an oversight board and an oversight board would be uh, c composed principally of users. In each of these utility cases, if you were to eliminate the village board as the overseer, you would still need some sort of a board that would make decisions on behalf of the ratepayers. So an oversight board of users would replace the role played by the, by the village board. So that, that's fire. Uh, again, fire is distinct because it is uh, directly part of the, uh, um, of the, of the village budget. Um, unlike uh, water, wastewater, and electric, which are uh, operated as enterprise funds. Um, <clears throat> once again, you know, if you were to move to an, an emerger situation, you wouldn't eliminate those functions, but you might oversee those functions differently. You might have a board that would oversee them that would be, again, composed of ratepayers. And you could have that be partly elected, partly appointed, um, all elected, all appointed, but nonetheless, it would be consisted of, of ratepayers. Now, one final thing I'll throw in here that is, um, uh, it's a significant piece of, of money. Currently, the state, uh, on behalf of the, because of the state college in, t in the community, uh, pays the village a payment in lieu of tax of 52000 They also pay the town a payment in lieu of tax. Uh, that's, in both, in both cases, it's determined by the, uh, the, the assessed value or the, uh, the tax on assessed value. It's not clear that this would go away. We've gotten some preliminary suggestions that this 52 would simply disappear. You know, my, the only response I would make is that if the state were willing to continue this and the state thought that the merger made a lot of sense and the legislature wish, wished to, it's within the power of the state to continue this, this payment. But preliminarily, we would think that this 52,000 would be at risk. Um, so let's talk a bit about the electric department. And the electric department staff supports electric distribution, but it also performs, performs some uh, 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 general public works tasks. Uh, the village charter uh, confers responsibility for sidewalks and, and storm drains. It's a kind of a long list of, of pieces and says that uh, the village shall provide these services and that there is a contribution, a preset contribution, you know, 10 cents off the grand list uh, that the town makes toward, uh, toward that, that service. <clears throat> so as a consequence, the, the electric department not only, uh, not only maintains, um, you know, does its core function, maintaining the, uh, the, the, the distribution system, but it also plays this role with, with uh, uh, sidewalk maintenance, sidewalk construction, and also dealing with storm drains and some of the other things that are listed. Um, not only that, the electric department supports the maintenance and repair needs of, of the water and wastewater utilities. So many of you pointed out, and I, it's, it's, a, it's a fair statement, that uh, we have some very specialized individuals working in the electric department who are highly paid because of their specialized skills. 
Um, and, and yet a, a good bit of their time, particularly in the winter, is devoted to these, these services, these functions that are really general public works functions, typically compensated at a lower level. Now, you know, you can't exactly expect to hire people who are qualified to do the electric work um, and pay them, you know, to Tuesday, we're, you know, you're clearing snow, so Tuesday we're going to pay you one rate, and then Wednesday we're back to being a, a line worker and we're going to, you know, pay you more then. That it just isn't the way the labor market works. So as a consequence, we have people who are line workers who are making that same rate, um, regardless of what kind of work they're doing. So I think it is a, correct to say that if we were able to reshuffle the responsibilities that there would probably be a cost savings uh, saving for the community if we had individuals who are um, you know, the, can the specialized skills of the rate of the line uh, workers uh, you know doing not doing that that special that general work of, of, of public works <clears throat> and you know arguably pushing all those public works functions to the town would better match community need to the labor skills but that would require a negotiation. It would require um, a, an, an amicable conversation between the trustees and the uh, uh, select board, uh, asking what those services are worth. I mean, right now the town, uh, again, is sending $59,000 to the village to pay for those services. And yet we know that's not enough to pay for those services. Um, uh, you know, Troy estimates we're looking at $120,000, $130,000 as a total cost, which means that the village and the town are effectively sharing those responsibilities half and half. That doesn't sound all that off to me, but nonetheless, this is something that you could negotiate. So we can conceive of eliminating that transfer from the town to the village and perhaps reversing that direction so that money would flow instead of from the town to the village, it would flow from the village to the town, and then the town would, would staff up and provide these uh, public works services, and leaving the electric department to do what it does best, which is maintaining the, the distribution system. It's just a possibility. This has been a, this is a real bone of contention in the community. Now, I'm not telling you anything. I, uh, I heard about it uh, frequently in the interviews I had with many of you. One way to fix it, again, would be to reconcile this. It would require, uh, again, negotiation with the town and the village. It would require some money to flow in a different direction than it flows right now and a change in the staffing. Um, and I'm going to be done really quickly here. <clears throat> So final statement before we go to questions and, 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 and comments. The jurisdictional uh, disputes between the village and the, and the town um, seem to have created a fair bit of, 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 of rancor. Um, again, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Uh, there's, there, there is a lot of, um, um, th there are some, there's some <coughs> bad feelings, there's some ill will in the community. Um, you know, I think about uh, you know, the, the old quip that good fences make good neighbors. And um, if there isn't a clear articulation of who's supposed to do what and who's supposed to pay for what, um, you can uh, create friction. And I think that that friction is, um, is contrary to the best interest of, of, the, of the community and uh, I don't think is, is, is serving you real well. So I, I guess I would urge you, you know, the question of merger, I mean, that would be one way to fix the problem. You know, if we've got a, a, dis, dis, you know, a conflict over who does what, well, let's just get rid of one of the who's, and then we don't have that problem anymore. And so, yes, that would take care of the problem, but it's a, a fairly extreme solution to what is, I think, a, a problem that probably could be handled uh, uh, by negotiation and more dialogue. Uh, and with that, I will, um, be quiet and um, ask for comments, questions. <clears throat> Is there a reason why we couldn't just get rid of the village electric and sell it to the co owner or somebody else? <clears throat> so the question is uh, would it be possible to, s to get rid of village electric and sell it to the co op? Um, well, the one, I guess, a couple things. Um, if you take a look at, um, now granted, Johnson Electric is very small. Uh, there are a lot of uh, small public power uh, entities in uh, the state of Vermont. Johnson is, is one of the smallest. And uh, I, one of the options would certainly be to sell the, the uh, electric service. There, there's another option too, and that would be to contract the line work uh, so that you could have a contract with uh, Morrisville, for example, 
uh, that Morrisville would, would, would do that specialized piece that we're talking about that requires special uh, knowledge. You would retain ownership, you would retra retain management, but the, but the line work would be contracted out. <clears throat> Nonetheless, I think it is fair to point out that Johnson's rates um, are relatively low. Um, you know, if we were to go to, uh, you know, Vermont, Vermont Electric Power, for example, um, you know, is, is, is significantly more. It's not the lowest um, in the region. Uh, you know, Innisbury Falls, Morristown, Ludlow, both a little bit lower. Uh, but that's an option. Um, and I, I, th I think the, uh, the question of whether the, of, of how the, the, the electric department is managed is, uh, is, is uh, above my pay grade. I don't know enough about electric distribution to be able to make those, those claims. I know that some folks feel that it should be managed differently. Uh, you know, I, I do think that the fact that residential rates are, are relatively low is a, is, is a good thing. Um, it is a very complex uh, service. It's a very complex regulatory environment right now. Um, and it you know, doesn't get any less complex. So there may come a point at which the regulatory burden um, on a small electric utility like Johnson's may force you uh, to join someone larger. Um, but at the moment, I think the people who point to the low rates and say, hey, not only low rates, but also reliability. Um, <clears throat> you know, I talk to uh, one of you who has been in town for, uh, I think, five or six years and, and, and said that uh, uh, power has gone out about five minutes uh, over that period. So reliability is high and rates are relatively low. Um, there's another, there is also a, a point made to me that commercial rates uh, were exceptionally high. And uh, I haven't finished my analysis, but I, I, and when, I, when I look at the rates and my preliminary analysis says that that's not correct, that the commercial rates are competitive as well. So offhand, I understand the, uh, that, 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 that that's an option. Um, and it will always be an option, and it may be one you may have to take for various reasons, but right now there's no burning need uh, to eliminate the electric department. Other questions? What are the different reasons mergers occur? So I get the financial. I get that people don't get along. Are there other, what are the other reasons that you? Mostly it's around, uh, the, the, most of the time I see a lack of, of uh, volunteer uh, manpower really being the, the, the piece that, and sometimes that manifests itself in different ways. A um, couple of war stories. Uh, there was a, a very small municipality that merged. Um, I, was, I, I was the consultant to the merger. Um, they merged, I think, three years ago. Um, they had a, um, an annual property tax levy of $27,000, and yet they decided to be self insured for workers' compensation insurance. So they weren't, no insurance, they were just self-insured for workers' comp, and they also had a volunteer fire department. Uh, the volunteer fire department had a, um, had a fundraiser, the volunteer firefighters field days, and one of the firefighters uh, got into a drunken brawl, is the way it's been described to me, and she hurt her foot. And uh, she has been charging the village against that workers' comp for, um, I think at the time I got involved, it had been eight years, and the bills were mounting. Um, so it was a mistake. It was a ma mistake made by a naive mayor and a naive uh, you know, a, a group of village trustees. They got forced into it uh, because of that. Um, I thought it was a good decision for them uh, to decide to dissolve. Um, other cases, I know that uh, uh, another community that, that actually did dissolve uh, two years ago that I worked with, um, they had been Oh, I mean, communities across America have been pushed by the Environmental Protection Agency to get rid of surface water sources for drinking water. Um, <clears throat> State of New York has been very aggressive at, 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 in encouraging that and pushing small communities to get rid of their surface water sources. So in a very small community, I think the water uh, service, I think they serve 260 customers. Um, they had a Frankly, I mean, a perfectly adequate spring that they'd been using for a very long time, but they were forced to get rid of the surface water source. So, so what did they do? They did what anyone in a situation like this, you call a professional. So they called an architectural and engineering firm, and the A&E firm came out and said, well, here's what you should do, and outlined a $4 million renovation to that water system. 
which was a lot more than they needed, and it was a lot more than they could afford. Um, but because the you know the village um, didn't really wasn't wasn't being properly advised by uh, somebody else. I mean the county, the state, uh, they went ahead, did this four million dollar um, ex- uh, uh, renovation, um, and they um, saddled their taxpayers with a forty year uh, bond to pay for it. So you could. They are financial, but it's different from simply saving. You know, it's not. I guess when I, the cost yeah, they're, they got in yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Cost savings are one thing. They got in trouble is another. And again, if you've got a, a, a small community, I mean, if, if, you know, Franny, the mayor, in this last um, uh, example I, I gave you, um, you know, is 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 an electrician. I, I imagine that Franny's a very good electrician. She's mayor just because nobody else is willing to be mayor, and she's a good soul. But she really wasn't qualified to be mayor, and uh, as a consequence, um, you know they, they got themselves into trouble. So if you've got again, if you've got too shallow a pool of volunteers to draw from, it's easier for those mistakes to occur. Uh, I mean, you uh, select board and trustees. I mean, you have really significant responsibilities, and um, you know I, I, I've I've met an, with enough of you that I'm confident that you take them very very seriously. Uh, but I've been in other communities where that hasn't been the case. I mean, another community that just last year decided not to dissolve, uh, only half of the village board is filled because they can only beg enough people to fill half the seats. Um, and the mayor has been uh, been mayor for a, a long time. <laughs> At insult to injury, uh, when the merger vote came around, um, the, uh, the office staff in this community is two people. It's got the clerk treasurer and it has the mayor. And the clerk treasurer supervises the election, including the election about whether the village ought to dissolve, which the mayor opposed. Which would have been okay, except that the clerk treasurer is married to the mayor. <laughs> what can I say? Um, I, I, they're good people and I, I, I'm pretty confident that she wouldn't put her thumb on the scale, but I also know that they felt really strongly about this dissolution question. So I know that the people who had proposed the dissolution in that particular community were reaching out to the county to try to get some help, and, but in the state of New York, if a village wants to run an election, the village gets to run the election, and the, uh, the county board of elections can't change that. Uh, so they, everybody just kind of shrugged their shoulders and said, well, you know, I mean, if, if I were supporting the dissolution, I would make sure that I camped out um, in the village office for the uh, five hours of the election and just hung around and paid attention. I don't know whether they did, did that or not, but, but that's a problem. And uh, in a lot of small communities, that's really what you've got. Other questions? I'm, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. Um, how would you quantify the, like the intangibles uh, in, the, in like the, like the, the 20 hours that you've talked with people, the intangibles about the, just the pride and identity of being a part of either of these bodies, you know, the, the, the pride that one gets from being a, uh, a volunteer or a resident or a member of the village and the identity and pride that one gets from being a member of the town. Yeah. So the question. Yeah. So the question is, uh, uh, you know, how does how does identity figure in, and it figures in very strongly, um, and there are many communities where uh, the identity, particularly if you're talking about a village that's been proposed for dissolution, people say. I mean, in my community, there's a suburban community called Brockport, and uh, Brockport um, is a candidate for uh, for dissolution. I think that there are some good arguments that they should consider it. But if they were to dissolve, they would become part of the town of Sweden. And I guess they didn't want to be Swedish. They've refused this twice. Um, now, you're Johnson & Johnson, so you don't quite have that problem. Um, but at the same time, being part of the village of Johnson means something to people. Um, and putting on, you know, just what happens in many communities in New York is people just, you know, change the sign and it goes from being the village of whatever to being the hamlet of whatever. Because hamlet has some kind of emotional connection, but doesn't actually have any, any uh, legal function. So I, um, I understand that concern about identity, and for some communities it's, it's really important. Um, when the names change, it's really uh, important. Um, 
you know, you, some of you may know that Seneca Falls in, uh, in New York State is very closely associated with, with the women's rights movement. And uh, uh, Seneca Falls, there was a village in a town of Seneca Falls. Of course, they had the same name, which helped. But the village of Seneca Falls did decide to dissolve, which is a longer story, which is also interesting, but uh, not, not germane. So I won't go down that tangent. If you want to ask me later, though. Um, but um, so identity issues do matter. And yeah. So I just want to point out, I'm glad that you noticed that really no big things that are duplicates, things that we could consolidate to save money or be more efficient. I just, I'm sorry, just completely against a merger. Um, I think this whole thing was brought up several years ago because there's a couple people that had some personal vendettas. I think we need to figure out how to just move on from this idea. We spent enough time and enough money. We were promised a bunch of efficiencies and cost savings with Act 46. We got none of those. But what do we need to do as citizens to say, call the question on this and move on? Just forget about that. Right. Well, let me ask a, uh, uh, really ask a process question. Um, <clears throat> Understand that you're, neither the village nor the town could put a question to village meeting or town meeting about actual merger without preparing uh, a plan. Um, I assume, and I'm looking at you know, Gordy and Eric, I assume that you could put a question, um, you know, should we consider, continue considering this? Uh, that's one thing that I don't think there's any kind of legal way to that. But to actually vote on a merger, you really would have to have a plan first. You couldn't do that without a plan. Is that, is that fair? Um, so, yeah. Um, I would just like to speak to the officer, which is, I, I think Could you speak up a little bit? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. I would like to express the opposite, in that I think it's um, important that the town and the village merge, if for no other reason than they There's a lot of fear around losing control from people, possibly on both sides. I don't totally know what the resistance is, but I personally see it, although I could be wrong, as sort of dissolving both boards and creating a new board that would be one that would have to work together as one without the consideration of who controls the sidewalk versus who plows the driveway versus whatever. As somebody who had to or tried to do a project in town and had to kind of navigate both things, it was not a pleasant experience. It wasn't a pleasant part of that experience, and it would have been a lot easier to do something like that if I had one more to deal with um, instead of two. Thank you. Others? I've got one, but I want to make sure everybody else has not spoken has a chance before I do. Four years. I'm wearing a party type of t-shirt that I serve under the chief and the officers. I'm, it's nothing for why I'm here. I want to clarify that. Just solidarity with the firefighters. I have to, uh, now that I have looked back, I see two other trustees here. I need to call a meeting for trustees that should have been at six o'clock. So I'm doing it now at seven o'clock. So I need to have a meeting at 7.30 and I need the agenda. We have two extra items to add. One is 10 cents on a grand list and the other one is we'll add another personnel issue that was already on the agenda for executive session. So I need that from you trustees, is there anything else you want to add to the agenda? Okay, that's that out. I thought there was just one trustee and looked back and I saw one more and said, uh oh, I gotta get a meeting up there. There are comments made about uh, the pilot money, payment in lieu of taxes, $52,000. Meritor sent an email, which I, went, I just wanted to read it. Um, Here's a response from Meredith to the people that do the tax government.gov so forth. The village of Johnson currently receives a pilot money payment for state owned land within the village. The town of Johnson separately receives a pilot payment for state owned lands within the town. We are currently studying the potential impacts if the town and village were to merge into a single municipality. We are wondering what the impact would be on the pilot payment currently received by the village. The current state-owned land within the village is also within the town. So, 
if there is only one municipality, would the entire village payment go away or would the town receive that extra money? The response from the state to Merida. Hi Merida, you are correct. If the two were to merge, there would only be one municipal rate. As with all other towns or state-owned buildings, only one payment would be made to that municipality. So the village, our general fund through village taxes is about $112,000 a year. So the 52,000, that's roughly half of our operating budget. So this is just one more thing. I wanted to clarify that it's uh, very important. Thank you. But Gordy, that doesn't say that there will be, they said they're writing one check, but they didn't say how big that check is. It's based it, on the tax rate. So it's the based on the tax rate. I see. So, so without a village tax, it would be reduced by that money. Okay. Yes. So we'd be losing probably 52000 or maybe 50000 from the state coming into what really works between the town and village because, as Kent has said, all the departments are really are working, yeah. not to duplication, but right. what one department does, another one doesn't have to do, and that's spreading our resources and equipment and manpower. Right. Okay. okay. If the difference is five cents, difference is five cents, if you're talking, if we merge, the tax rate for the village would end up in the town pool. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the total of the check cut would be higher for the town because it now has village property taxes in it. It's not just the town property taxes. So that 52000 that you're talking about, if, they're doing, if their check is cut based on the tax rate and what our uh, total property taxes are for the town, you know, the total of the town, Right now it's separated by village and town. I would think that village would end up in the town bucket. Right. The town tax rate, as Kent said, would probably potentially could go up slightly, but it would not be enough to make up that full fifty two. Not the full, but it would make up part of it. Might, I, I, who knows what it would be, Presumably, but it could make up some of it. But I, I highly no. doubt that it would be anywhere close to the fifty two. Again, I can't say that for sure, but just based on the numbers that we've looked at. And this, this is the sort of thing, incidentally, that you would work out if you were to do a merger plan, that you would, you would go through uh, in great detail and, and try to identify exactly how the services were provided. 22,000. 22, Other questions, comments? I mean, the thing, about, the thing is that, um, I'm not sure who's in the corner, but over in the corner and what Daryl said and Tommy's question. I mean, it's all about the same thing. It's about, when you ask the question about identity, Tommy, we're Johnson. I don't hear anyone walking around saying, I'm Johnson Village. That's ridiculous to me. I mean, I live in Johnson Town, and I talk about Johnson Village everywhere I go. I talk about how pretty our village is and how awesome the art studio is. And, you know, I say things like that all over the place. It's not just because I live, you know, five houses up from the village, which is pretty much a big town of the house, it's about how far out of the village I am. Um, it doesn't change my town identity, and I find it really hard to believe it changes anyone else's. If it's about a pride thing and a control thing and an ownership thing, that's very different. That's not identity. That's a personal emotion. Um, so I tend to agree with you. If we can get over the personal emotion, stuff that happens within our select board and our trustees and others who you know are coming in with voices from different angles this is not a problem it doesn't matter whether we merge or not frankly um, that's my two cents i guess a good question for eric and uh probably gordy um I guess I've been in the dark. I don't know what the big issues that everybody's talking about between control of this, control of that. I, can you enlighten me a little bit, Eric, about what this issue of control is? <laughs> I need to be enlightened a little bit too, I think, because I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's behind that. Uh, you know, there are definitely times when there's conflict between the trustees and the select board, but we usually are able to negotiate out something. Uh, Gordy, do you have any thoughts as to conflicts or? There have been a few controls. issues in the past, but I don't think that it's worth bringing them up here at this point. Right. How long did it take you to 
pay for this process to hire somebody? Uh, too long. Two years. And the answer to that question, it was well, uh, the, almost two years now. We had to negotiate. So something that could have been, a decision that could have made, been made rather quickly because the town and the village had to negotiate took two years. That, that is a prime example of what you're asking some of the conflict is. I mean, you guys might not want to list everything right now, but you know. <laughs> Okay, I'll take there's, that one. <laughs> that's the only one that I know about. I, mean, I guess it's never smooth when you've got to negotiate with somebody, whereas if we were a dictatorship and one no, board controlled everything. We're asking for one unified board so we can avoid a two year long process of hiring somebody to do something for us. You're using one example over decades of these boards working together, working things out. So I'm just confused of what the big issue is about this one issue over decades that Trump said need to merge when the issue was merging or not merging. I mean, I think in general, shit gets done when it gets done. You know, other than this one issue, I don't see where the boards have been at odds so much that they, they avoid doing their, doing their job. <coughs> This did take a little while to have somebody uh, do this study for the town and the village. Uh, but there's nothing sinister behind it. I think we were all trying to look for the best deal for the dollar, best deal for the buck. And uh, we started out with three people. Uh, it was quite a process. We went back and forth. And I think we got the best individual to do the job for us for the least amount of money. Uh, so that's my take on that. And it's actually going to be, I believe, basically all accomplished by town meeting this year, as far as your study goes, yeah. everything else. And there'll be plenty of information at town meeting. So probably really in the whole scheme of things, two years isn't really that bad. I mean, if we were talking about four or five years to get to this process, I would see some kind of a problem. But I don't see a real problem here for two years. Thanks, um, Mike. You talked about you'd like to have just one more. Try working for 13 people. Well, doesn't have to do with you. know, I worked for 13 people for 20 and a half years. So, you know, you have to deal with it. Um, I think a lot of this was brought on, like Daryl said, people that had bad feelings towards certain people in town and those same people started all the, one of those people started all the problems between the town and the village, if you ask me, and I see it firsthand every day. Um, we do have to deal with, with it. they're saying there's nothing, but there is. When you've got the town guys talking about the village guys and the village guys talking about the town guys, it happens. But what do you expect when you see the same thing from your two boys? You know, if they can't get along, why should the guys have, why should the guys get along? But I, I'm totally against the merger. I think that's ridiculous. I think the problem with this taking two years was nobody really wanted to do it. That was my opinion. Nobody wanted to do it. You had a bunch of people that thought they were going to save all this money by doing it and take control of the electric department for one thing. They want, these people wanted to do away with the electric department. They wanted to contract it out to somebody else. And they were doing it underhanded so that nobody knew what was going on until Club Hill stood up at a village meeting and said, this is what they're trying to do. And the village taxpayer said, no, we don't want this. We don't want to get control of our electric car from somebody else. But that's not my motivation. I think, and I still support I have problems, I thought, it's gonna be a big, and you know, I'm a tax collector. I hear it from everybody. You want a great job, you take that job. You're going to hear from everybody. Everybody going to pay the taxes. This is about how much the taxes are. Especially the village ones? Everybody. It doesn't matter who it is. But, you know, that comes down to the people that you elect in this town that do the budget. It comes down to that. You want to start somewhere, start there. Start with who you elect and what they're spending money on. You know, they, they think nothing. People think nothing of going out and buying a piece of property that's going to cost millions of dollars probably to even get ready to sell. 
Nobody thought twice about that, but that's okay. But, you know, we had two trustees stand up at town meeting and say, let's cut $30,000 from the budget. One of them made the motion, another one seconded it. How bad is that when you've got two trustees doing that? You wonder why there's friction in this town? Seriously. You're not going to solve it by having a merger. You're going to have just one board. What kind of board is that going to be? The board that we elected in. So we don't know the question uh, towards the back here. Oh, well, so I, I was interested in knowing from the various boards uh, perspective how long they think this process might take if this does go through, how long the negotiation and the figuring out of who takes on which jobs and how all of that shakes out. I imagine a long time. Yeah, I guess the way I envisioned this is we would get some data back, facts from a consultant. And, and this is me speaking personally, I don't think there's going to be a smoking gun, and he sort of has alluded to it already, that says, yes, we should merge, or no, we shouldn't. And it's going to come down to more of a politically will of the people and not financial reasons. I think it probably then, it'll be up to the select board, but we will take the results of what we get back and just lay it up to the voters and let them decide. I'm not sure if we'll come through with a recommendation or not, because I, like I said, I don't think it's going to be a strong position either way. If the vote, will of the vote, well, if the will of the voters is to, no, let's scrap the idea, it's done right then. If the will of the voters is, yeah, let's still explore it, then we would enter into negotiations between the town and village. And also that very same process or step is going to be required within the village with their voters. Because either one of us can uh, Say no. stop the process. Right. We have veto power, I guess. Uh, if both the town and village voters decide, yeah, you should still explore it, go into negotiations, and then, you know, I anticipate it would be quite a process. Because there is a lot of moving parts. I don't know if you have history of how long these things take, but it, it's probably a time. Well, well in New York, um, you know, which is where most of our uh, experience is, the, uh, the law, Article 17A, makes it very specific. So you don't have a whole lot of choice over time. It is one of the things that has to happen in, a, in lockstep. But you don't have that kind, of, uh, that kind of experience here in Vermont. So again, I would point to Essex that's been having this conversation for at least 20, 12 years, I think. And uh, so it you know, really could go on. There's nothing that makes it, that, that there, there's no logical end point for the conversation in Vermont, which is I think why a lot of these have not occurred. So, you know, there's a, it's interesting, I talked to many people who said, well, there's been, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of mergers in Vermont. And I, I looked it up as well, no, there, there really haven't. Uh, it's it's hard, and you know you can tell by the conversation we're having tonight. This is a really difficult thing to do. Uh, that's why I mean I I I think a lot of things about the law that Governor Cuomo uh, uh, passed in New York are not good. I mean the fact that the town doesn't have anything to say and all that sort of thing, but putting it on a on a firm timetable. The other thing, incidentally, is if um, a merger or a dissolution comes up for a vote in New York and it gets voted down you may not bring it up for another four years. It is done, um, which is another good thing about it. So these conversations, and they do come back after four years sometimes. Um, but I do think that uh, if there were some in an interest on the part of the village and the town to have a conversation, I would put a deadline. I would create a small committee. I would set a deadline. I would, you know, and, and if in fact uh, the committee wasn't able to come up with a plan, um, that both boards approved within six months. That's the time, incidentally, we have if we're approached by a community to, to do a plan in New York. We have six months to do the plan. If you can't do it in six months, walk away. One thing I like to say, I keep hearing from the village resident, is uh, it's not just the dollars. That's easy to look at. You can be a CPA or you can look at the numbers on other things and you can see, see things cut and dry. But what I keep hearing is quality of service. And for the service of the village, the guys on their snow plowing and sanding, they've got five guys out there working. I don't think the town has five guys out there. They have two. 
That's and the problem. Like, why do we call people out? Like, why? What is the point? That's the problem right there. Wait, like, if we're saying we have five people out doing a good job, we have only two doing a good job somewhere else. Like, why do that? That's the problem. This is the problem we're talking about. With five guys that we had with water, sewer, electric, for the, what is it? Something wrong in the street. We have high quality service. The guys are always there. We have not cut back on a number of people working on outages or the storm weather. The flip board has cut back. Talk to the highway crew. They're unionizing. Is that the we whole have not village cut back. department? Excuse is me? that all the village employees? Five? Yep. The village has in five. fact, when, a, when they get a lot of snow, we, Joy brings in a sixth one. So we have six. So if you want to talk about quality of service, when you went around or the, the, the well, you know, what I remember of town meeting, I can't remember if it was town meeting or village meeting, and I remember village residents saying, we pay town taxes and we pay village taxes. And what do we get out of the town? And why should we have to pay town taxes? That is, I think, the first time I remember ever hearing them somebody say, why shouldn't we just merge and all be one? Because it was, I, and I, I know it was village people saying, why should we pay two taxes? Town, why should, to their credit, you know, takes care of all the streets. Because they pay they town pay. and, yeah, but they were seeing it as they pay two taxes and the town people only pay one tax. And I think that was, I don't think it's what Ann was saying. I think that is where the first comment of why don't we merge came up. And that was not three years ago. Four years ago. It was a while ago. There was one about, we, we did one study about 20 years ago. Yeah, I know Mike it wasn't that long that, ago, but. There was one 20 But it was, made, it was but. something simple like that that started the whole mm -hmm. thought process. I don't think it was anybody out to get anybody. I mean, some of us here know a lot of people in town, and I never did know anything. If I hear the flip side, I hear people say, why do we pay in the village, pay a town tax? What you're doing for bridges and culverts up on the hill it doesn't doesn't I know, benefit you can't the village win. people. So you, you can't, can't win. win. So oh, that's so. why it's like, why don't you just be one and have one board? Because your service is going to suffer. You think? I know. <laughs> Talk to the town people. I don't know. I don't know enough about the electrical. We had studied it 20 years ago, like Gordy said, and it's actually in one of our the villages village reports, and I think it it does say in there that we. As when I was a trustee, we came to the conclusion that it was going to be ad more advantageous for the village than it would be the town. Right. I so then that. we decided that what was the sense? Because each side would have a vote. If the town voted no, there would be no ver merger, even if the town, if the village voted yes. So that was where we left it 20 years ago. If I can just make a quick editorial comment, Mike. <clears throat> when I went through and did an analysis of the budget, understand that you can take, you can create, and you should create uh, special districts to provide specific services that, for example, the village is receiving now um, that have been pa paid for by the village. And you could structure a merger agreement so that no one lost. Um, so that everyone gained. So it, it's, I think when you think, um, I think it's, it's common to think that these things, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. You can both be winners. I'm, so I'm just well, I understand that, but yeah. we, we did our, our own little study when we were uh, trustees, and uh, that's what the conclusion was. Uh, we didn't get into the weeds like you're talking about and to try to get these districts where everybody wins. So it's a good point. I don't think we'd lose employees either. It's not like you would. Just because you join, you get rid of this employee and that employee. You're still going to have the same number of people working. It's just so, one board. And, it's, it's, you know, you, you've you've already. already people to one because if you merge, the town is not going to pay thirty some odd dollars an hour for people to do the sidewalks. Well, why should they? the village complains about it now? But why don't they hire people to do the sidewalks for fifty bucks an hour? Right. So why? Should, so okay. So. So Annie, you had your chance. The gentleman in the back, you, I don't think. It seems to me the logical conclusion is to bring this to a vote. Right. And it seems like that would be the will of the people of the village and the will of the people of the town. Oh, that's the right. Um, to, to bring this to a vote. You know, let, let, let's let the village people decide and let's let the town people decide. You know, I think if you, we get the results of this study, we could put some 
nonpartisan, non-biased information out, people can make their own decision. And I, I would, I think that's the process that we all, we all, that's better to end to it for another 10 years, one way or the other. Yeah. You know? I remember going to the village meeting, the annual one, where we discussed the electric department, and it seemed as though the village never wants to get rid of the electric department. I mean, it runs really well. It seems as though we're getting a good uh, deal for our money. It, I don't know if it would work to keep the village electric, but then everything else becomes one board. I don't know. It seemed as though at that meeting, the electric department was really being uh, sought after and people wanted to keep it, but everything else was kind of up in the air. And maybe that's a really good solution. It's not a total merger, but the elect there's an electric board and then everything else, like maintaining the streets and the fire department and all that is all town. I don't know. Can I just put it on the water Yeah, can I? Yeah, that's kind of the point of, you know, you could create these individual, because cause certainly water, wastewater, electric, all, and fire all really have to be independent because they're paid for by the people who are receiving the service. Is that an option? Would that help make the two boards, uh, I mean, they wouldn't be arguing. You guys wouldn't be arguing. You, it would be one board for everything else. And then the electric runs with the electric, and the water runs with the water people. I don't know. I mean, I don't know enough about it, but that may be a solution. I don't know. My opinion from managing the four departments currently is that we would lose some efficiency that we have. Um, we have one staff, five people, that do electric, water, sewer, and the general department. If you broke electric off by itself, <coughs> You would then have to restaff those positions, perhaps at a lower rate, but then you should try to, you know, we're currently able to do those tasks with five full time people. I don't think you could hire part time people to do, you know, water, sewer, general, or two people to do sidewalks and then three more people to do water and sewer. I think in many ways, even though we're paying a higher rate, it's very efficient because we have one staff doing so many functions. That's you know, my opinion from looking at it. Obviously, I see it from my perspective. Yes. How many lines do we have that are spending some of their time doing snow removal? All five. All five. They, they all, all make lines on the south. That's correct. So Ooh. that mirrors that, that the oh, okay. lines are subsidized the uh, sidewalks with electric rates? No. Well, um, so do we do that? Or? Well, we have very we have a separate budget, um, okay. and time is allocated. Their so the time and benefits are paid for our general department and working for the general department, and water department, the sewer department. It's all very clearly segmented. There's no cross. Okay. Thank you. We spent about $130,000 a year to maintain the sidewalks. Can you speak up a little bit, please? We spent about $130,000 a year to maintain the sidewalks. We talked with Kent about it. If that function had to be transferred to the town, they would have to hire two additional people to do that same work, which is about $130,000. It's not that the village is paying an extraordinarily high amount for the the maintenance of the sidewalks. We're able to provide that service with five people to do work very quickly, gradually <coughs> higher rates, but the town would only hire two people who would have to do the same amount of work and it would take much longer. Um, so there are efficiencies built into it. it works and the town's going to build efficiencies into it? Well, they have a road crew that has to be out plowing the roads at the exact same time as the sidewalks need to be cleared. So they need <coughs> new bodies on top of what like they have now.
Um, one of the points that you brought up was that in some communities where mergers take place, um, the boards are finding it difficult to find people to volunteer their time to be on boards. Do either the trustees or the select board see that there's a problem with uh, people volunteering their time for these boards? Two years ago, speaking for myself, when I ran for re-election, there were two of us ran for re-election. There were two more very energized, qualified candidates, so there were four of us. And I thought that was a good pool of uh, our community, and it worked out well because a year later, with people moving out or resigning, the two that did run are, are now presently on the board, and I, I salute them. They're doing a really good job. How about you, Eric? Uh, I think last year on the town meeting uh, ballot, there was not one contested election. Uh, we have problems not necessarily filling the select board, but filling uh, you know different committees and, and offices in the community, but not the select board. You did. Jason ran last year. Oh, okay. There was one. Well, then a follow-up to that is that you also mentioned that with, uh, call it a merger, um, that say the electric department or the fire department or the water and sewer department could then be monitored by an oversight board um, in which then what I would say is that we're creating two new boards to oversee the work of the one board that we have now. Right. Right. Um, it's a common it's a common structure that that you have that you have users who are uh, who are helping manage it. The, the, the you know, I think the the notion is that um, <clears throat> the reason for that is that right now you might not particularly. I think the issue is if you really want to. A, a, a town level um, oversight. The town is much broader than the water and much broader than the sewer and, and also broader than the electric department. And so that you would need to engage users because otherwise you'd, you'd kind of lose that democratic control uh, if in fact you had non-users uh, exercising oversight. So yes, there would be a need for, uh, for, for rate payers to be involved. Um, I know in the past we've had issues because the uh, village sewer system cannot be extended beyond the village uh, limits uh, without an agreement of some kind. So unifying the village or the town uh, could eliminate some of that problem. Uh, but then, on the other hand, the plant is only designed for a certain capacity then you create a problem where you have to then provide capacity to expand into the town and that runs into significant expense. Yeah, sewer and water are, are, are really important components of your, of, of your community's development agenda, right? I mean, often, um, you know, a desire to extend the sewer beyond its current boundary is because as an there is, you know, often a commercial entity or industrial entity wants to, to locate outside the, the perimeter of the village. And uh, so, so it's not always bad, uh, but, but, but those are really important management questions that you raise, you know, that, that, and they're not, they're not easy. I mean, government <clears throat> doesn't suddenly get easy just because you, you change the structure. Um, these are really challenging issues, which is why, you know, you rely on, on your, your trustees and your select board members. Uh, you know, to do, to do the very difficult job that they do. And uh, they spend a lot of time. And these are complex issues. Well, one of the reasons we're actually sitting here is that 30 years ago we decided to fix this building and add to this building rather than extend the sewer and water and electric beyond the village limits to build a school outside of the village. And people felt it was very important to maintain the characteristic of the village by keeping the school within the village boundary. Yeah. I, th 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 those are important considerations. Absolutely. I was just going to note that the sewer does extend beyond the village already. I'm sorry, we can't hear. 
Sorry, I was just going to note that the sewage all, sewer already extends beyond the village. The East Johnson extension. So does the electric. Yeah, electric, I mean, all three, um, are, none of them are, are perfectly contiguous with the village. Uh, Gordy, are the water and sewer the whole... Is, is it profitable, or do you run at a deficit? Do you make money? Do you come out ahead every year? How does that, the how last, does that wash out? We had a rate increase in 2013 for water and sewer. Then we had a rate increase, everybody hearing, then we had a rate increase in 2016, which I believe was 2%. So as our cost increase, we have to, uh, the board has to decide a rate increase to the actual people using it. Well, the general fund is from taxation, which you and I pay for property taxes. Same with the electric. The electric department hasn't had a rate increase since 2010. So I don't think there's very many utilities in the state that can say that and still maintain the service and uh, be one of the cheapest ones in Lamoille County. But you don't lose money on the electric. No. You make money. We, 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 you, get, you come out ahead. We aren't supposed to make a lot of money, but we aren't supposed to lose it because we have to reflect it on the rates for that. Yeah, enterprise functions are, are intended to be self-contained. Um, so if you're going to have a sewer extension, you need to take out a bond, and the bond will be paid over time by the, uh, by the, by the sewer. That's exactly what happened with the East Johnson sewer extension in the 70s. You know, see, there's, those of us on one, down 100C past the college farm, uh, the sewer line was extended down, down past us, and, but not the water system. So. And we all paid for the, we, we paid for the extension over the years. Done now, fortunately. I'm wondering if the Village Electric has a surplus at this time. There's no surplus. We just spent $500,000 on uh, taking down the power building up above the powerhouse bridge, and we still aren't done cleaning up in Merritt. We spent, what, just, not quite, how much? 320000 320000 we've spent, and we are not done cleaning it up yet for erosion and protecting the river. So that drove you down to zero? No, we're yeah. still... But were you talking about in the current fiscal year, or are you saying do we have a fund balance? Do you have a fund balance? We do still have a fund balance, yes. I think it's probably about 400 now, Rosemary. Three to 400. Yeah. And that's after that large expenditure? Yes. Based on the power of Yes. Kent, could you? Yeah. Well, everybody's here and we're all interested. Could you give a timeline on when you might be sending out a preliminary report for everybody here and in their community can look at it? Then the two boards can decide which path they each want to take, please. Yeah, I'm estimating two weeks. And you don't want to drag this out. No, uh, <laughs> I agree with Daryl. The sooner we can put this all behind us, the better off everybody's going to be. Yeah, now there, there's some additional background data that I want to collect and interpret, but most of the data are, are there. Um, so. And there will be no recommendation. That's right, there's no recommendation. So is it the sense of the trustees and the select board that they'll bring this to a vote of the uh, citizens? I, I think you need to give the select board and the trustees an opportunity to discuss that question after they've had a chance to read the report. Good answer, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Waste of experience. <laughs> Uh, Mark. Sorry. Well, but, but more importantly, the village meeting too. That's right. There'll be a resolution. Both yeah. bodies have to should should weigh in. Right. So the, the, this 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 public part of the conversation will appear to be adjourned uh, by acclamation, and uh, you folks have meetings to to run, right? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.